there's these three guys at the pearly gates, right? And they're all trying to get into heaven. Now, first guy walks up and says, It's me, Lord, the Reverend Martin Luther King. I always believed a man shouldn't be judged by the color of his skin, but by the content of his character. I always try, no Lord... No need to explain, Reverend King. Please, come in. Thank you, Lord. So he goes in, right? Now, the second guy walks up and says, My name is Mohandas K. Gandhi. I believe that infinite love was a weapon of matchless potency. I tried many times... No need to explain, Bapu. Please, come in. And he walks in too, right? Now, the third guy, who's very good looking, says, My name is Mike McDonald, and I always believe that laughter was good for the soul. And through my comedy, I tried to make people feel good. You know, I, I know it's not brain surgery, but, you know, I mean, laughing and feeling good, it, it's got to count for something. Uh, uh, did you bring a videotape? From the Queen Elizabeth Theater in Vancouver, British Columbia, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mike McDonald! I'm as happy as I can be with the shape the world's in. But it keeps on getting harder to wear that silly grin. You can scream with laughter or scream with pain. But there's always little things that'll mess with your brain. And just when you think you're ahead of the game, something knocks you down and you have to start all over again. I'm as happy as I can be, so please stop asking me. Happy as I can be. Just duplicated the one that was in my living room. <laughs> Beautiful. People are always asking me if I'm happy. And, you know, I tell them I'm as happy as I can be with the shape the world's in now, you know. I think a lot of people aren't happy. I think, uh, I think a lot of people lead quiet lives of desperation with life being a series of ups and downs with brief interludes of happiness. Thank you, good night. All right. <laughs> What kind of a show is that? <laughs> the, the usher's gonna be passing out some Kool-Aid. I want you to drink it right now. <laughs> oh. What the hell? <laughs> Bring in another crowd. 14 shows a day. This guy must be funny. Huh? <laughs> drink the Kool-Aid. What? Uh, Bring in another crowd. Personally, I, I don't trust people that are happy all the time, you know. You know those people that have on their fridge that phrase, if life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. <laughs> I hate these people. <laughs> Wouldn't want to be trapped in an elevator with one of these people. So, you might be here for a while, let's get to know each other. <laughs> You know, they say that money can't buy happiness, but, uh, oh, I'd like to give that theory a try just once. <laughs> eh, give me a ton of money, I'll get back to you with the research on that. <laughs> What's the worst thing that could happen? Oh, you're right, I wasn't happy, but I'm rich. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you never get money when you want it, though, huh? Like these people win the lottery when they're 90 years old. Nice time to win when you got about a week left on the planet. <laughs> How much oatmeal can you buy, really? Win the lottery when you're 90 years old, everybody wants to tell off is dead. <laughs> Guy to beat you up in grade eight, my boss, well, they're all dead. Right? All of a sudden, you're yelling at the paper boy for no reason. Yeah, you're, you're kicked out in the roses. I didn't do anything. Shut up, but everybody's dead. <laughs> The people that kill me are the people that win the lottery and they go back to their same old tired jobs. Now, why would you want to go back to the factory if you won the lottery? Is that just to rub the noses of all the other people there into the fact that you don't have to be there anymore? Hey, hi everybody! Sorry I'm four hours late. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta ease up on that snooze alarm. <laughs> Better punch in. <laughs> late, late, late! Mike, the boss wants to see you. Ooh. I'm shaking. Yeah, 
totally different attitude. You're sitting in the boss's office and he's giving you grief. You just sit there going, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I just bought the company. Here's a broom. Little dusty in here, don't you think? <laughs> Everybody has somebody that uh, they used to go out with that they dumped you. They like, they really screwed you over. And you'd love to meet them again when you're doing well. Just had your picture in the paper winning $50 million in the lottery. How you doing, babe? Hey. Make sure you got a newspaper there. Still living in the trailer park? <laughs> Fly by your house in a private jet sky riding. I'm doing fine now. <laughs> Buy all the land around our house, put in trombone factories. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> Make it stop! Get over it! You know, they did a survey with people who win the lottery. You know, what's the first thing they go out and buy? And the number one answer was a brand new car. That's probably what I do. You know, get a, you know, be nice to have a nice ride for a change. You know, buy a sports car, Lamborghini or something, really fully decked out. You know, the turbo and everything. Car phone, fax machine. You know, the whole nine yards. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was thinking of getting a car phone a little while ago, but you know, if I ever got a car phone, I'd only use it for important things. Because I believe that driving all by itself is plenty. You know, staying between the white lines, not killing anyone, that's enough. I mean, how much more responsibility do you want to have? I mean, how much more stuff do you want to do in your car? You're rolling down the window, you're lighting up a cigarette, you're changing the tunes on the radio, got a sunroof going, you're in a car phone. Oh, hold on, call waiting, all right. Uh... <laughs> hey, your left foot's free, why don't you put it in a computer game? Yeah, yeah. You know, they just came out with these voice-activated car phones. You know, duh. I mean, uh, how many people had to go off the road before this was invented? <laughs> you know, most people are probably getting an accident the first day they get the car phone. You're like, guess where I'm phoning from? Yeah, my car? That's right. I'm Joe Important. <laughs> I got my car. <laughs> oh, I'll have to phone you back. You know, they just came out with a video phone now. Something they promised us in the 50s, with that along with jetpacks. <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> I really don't think the video phone's gonna catch on because the fact that people will be able to see you will prevent you from answering the phone half the time. <laughs> you won't be able to come out of the bathroom with your pants around your ankles. <laughs> This better be important. <laughs> Every time I go to the bathroom, they phone. Ring, 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 ring. Yeah. It's gonna be harder to phone in sick for work, you know? Yeah, I really sick today, I can't come in. How come you got a tennis racket in your hand? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be right in. Damn it! Video phone's gonna give a new meaning to that obscene phone call. Hello? Bleh. The hell? Keep the kids away from the phone. There's some kind of pervert on the phone. Hope they catch him. I think the stupidest use of the phone, obviously, is that 976 sex numbers, you know. <laughs> This kills me. What does this say about our society? How unhappy do you have to be to have phone sex? Please. First of all, if, you, if you're getting off on the phone, get a life. I mean, please. <laughs> it kills me the way they advertise these things. Phone up and hear a woman's secret fantasies. A woman's secret desires. <laughs> if there's any reality that she phone up and hear stuff like, yeah, I'd like to get paid the same amount as a man for the same job. <laughs> I'd like to be able to go to work without being sexually harassed. Three bucks a minute for this. What the, what the hell kind of phone call was that? I think personally, I, I think we're getting a little too much technology in our lives. You know, I mean, how many times have you been waiting in line for somebody banging away on a computer? You said, like, these computers are supposed to speed things up, and we find ourselves waiting and waiting. And how many times do you think, if you actually turn the computer around, that it would just say stuff like, keep hitting the keys till he goes away? <laughs> 
trying to find your reservation. You could be playing a video game for all we know. Shut up. Come on. She had a piece of paper and a pen. That always works. Shut up. See, computers used for important things. I have no problem with that. But computer supermarket checkouts, there's another example. What was wrong with the old way? Remember the old way? Put your food in the belt, somebody rang it up, you paid them, put it in the bag, left the supermarket, did a few other things that day. <laughs> Nowadays, because these guys want to take inventory, this happened. <laughs> Get the manager. Ring it up yourself, that's it. Ring it up yourself. Use your fingers and ring it up. Now you put it in the bag. That's it. Paper or plastic, I could care less. Let's go! It kills me, people starving in Africa, and here we are wondering what to put our food in. Paper or plastic? I had paper last week. I'm all for this one world stuff, but man, you know, compared to Africa, we, we are like Martians. I mean, thank God that these people in Africa don't have satellite dishes where they could see our TV, because it would be like clockwork orange torture for these people, you know, like, all you can eat, 199, the bacon stuff! <laughs> Hamburgers floating, it's good! Man. It's amazing, you know, the people in Africa, they, they have such an amazing dignity in the face of death. They walk 100 miles to go to these refugee camps to get fed. They don't get fed right away. And yet they patiently wait their turn while watching other people get fed and not once have they ever crashed the gate and went, give me that food, <laughs> like we would. <laughs> I don't want to be in North America if we run out of food. <laughs> our tolerance and patience are all time low. You know, you want to check out our society's patience. How many times have you been to the supermarket in the express lane counting the items of the person in front of you? <laughs> Twelve cans of the same soup does not count as what well. you're in the wrong line. <laughs> no patience at all, boy. I mean, what's the worst thing we got to do to get food in this country? Let's say you wake up at four o'clock in the morning. Let's say you're hungry. Do you have to wait till the sun comes up? No, because we have convenience stores. <laughs> Open 24 hours a day with the shittiest food at three times the price. <laughs> And we're more than happy to pay it. Cheese dogs, give me three of those. <laughs> Cheese dogs, best time to have them, four o'clock in the morning. Yum, yum. <laughs> Might as well drill a hole in your heart, put the cheese right in there. <laughs> Tells me when the store's like three blocks away, do we walk? No, we drive. <laughs> we're a driving society. What the hell are you doing? What are you, a health freak? Get in the car, what are you doing? <laughs> three blocks, you were going to actually attempt that? Get in. <laughs> Some kind of weirdo. And it kills me how a short three block drive can piss some people off. I gotta go down to that stupid store. I can't put a red light. Damn it! It's always meant for me, man. Screen for everybody else. Every time I get it's like they know I'm coming, man. Right. Two can play this game. All right. See, it's obvious that, you know, in Africa, they don't have 24-hour convenience stores. In Africa, it's a tough gig getting food. In Africa, it's like, here's a spear, there goes your lunch. <laughs> I don't see a lot of us doing well over there. Well, how do you do this? <laughs> I miss! <laughs> food that runs, no fair. <laughs> it's so hot here, I hate it here. Get away from me, you smell. Where's the stores around? I want a Slurpee. <laughs> <sighs> Don't appreciate anything over here, you know? And it's all our luxuries that make us fat and lazy. You know, take example that stupid remote control. I haven't touched my TV in five years because of that thing. 
Huh? I think it was a lot better with your parents. Your parents had to get up and walk to the TV, you know. Like, ah, commercial. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Walked a mile a day. We're, we're sitting there with a the remote, like Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> More pizza. <laughs> The area that we get the most technology, obviously, is the home entertainment. They're always coming up with something new, especially for music. Always coming up with something new. Like, six months ago, I bought my first CD player. It took me so long to buy one because I was still pissed off about eight tracks. <laughs> I admit I can hold a grudge with the best of them, but... <laughs> I, got, I got sucked in with eight tracks really bad. I bought my entire record collection over in eight tracks, thinking they were the wave of the future, the new technology. Two months later... <laughs> Oh. oh, I see what's happened here. I just lost a ton of money. Eight track. What was I thinking? I've had milk last longer than eight tracks. They were the worst. God. I mean, I'm personally tired of being on this treadmill. Every six months, your stuff's obsolete. I mean, I know. In, in, in about another month, my CD player is going to be obsolete. And, and then, what the hell are we supposed to do with our CDs? Pull. <laughs> Pull. <laughs> CD shooting. Yeah. Our returning champion. Thank you. Load up the Madonna collection. I feel I have a psychological edge if I know what I'm shooting at. <laughs> the Japanese, you know, I have to admit, you know, they make the coolest toys. I mean, Sony rules as far as I'm concerned. But uh, now, Japanese, very smart people, but I think that they invented everything 20 years ago. And they're giving us one piece at a time so they can bleed us for more money. You know what, they just came up with this? Come on, I mean, I mean it all started with the Walkman, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, brand new Walkman! <laughs> music on the go, everywhere you go, you can listen to music, hey, you gotta have that, oh yeah. <laughs> Six months later, <laughs> look, oh, Dolby, oh. <laughs> Dolby, much better sound quality, no more hissing. No more that. No, no. I just finished this. Look, sweat still on my brow. Oh, yeah. That one no good no more. Take that one. Oh, look, auto reverse. You fat, lazy bastard. You can't turn on a tape. You want to see the heat pizza? You want to hollow? Ah, ah, ah. All right. They had our number from day one, boy. They knew exactly where to hit us. Music, you know, some people, music very important, you know, after a hard day, a little bit of music can mellow you out, you know. How many people here like to have music on the background when they make love? Anyone? <laughs> the rest of you all live at home, is that it? <laughs> Everybody doing that Elmer Fudd thing in the bedroom. Be very, very quiet. <laughs> My parents will hear us. <laughs> I like to have music on the background, but I find as you get a little older, the music gets a little slower, because, you know, you don't want to hurt yourself, you know? It's supposed to be a pleasurable thing, you know? That's one thing I've never understood, this whole sex and pain thing. I mean, uh, you know, they have a special name for those, um, those women with the whips and the chains, the leather. With... Anybody know the name? <laughs> Dominatrix? <laughs> the deviant ones, look at them. Look at the deviant one. Get the camera on the deviant one. You there, you there with the camera, go over there. Hey, he doesn't listen to me. Shut up. Yo! Hey! Who the fuck is signing your checks? Yeah, I'm talking to you! Fuck! Hey! <laughs> he still doesn't know. What the hell happened? I'm <laughs> just doing my job. Tell your stupid little joke. <laughs> union! Union! He has no idea. <laughs> hey, what the hell? Is it raining in here? What the hell is he doing? Son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Anyways. Now that was fun for us, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yes, the answer was the S&M dominatrix, whatever. 
You seem to know that real fast. <laughs> Be some guys waiting for you. So you're the one that said S and M. Yeah. I wouldn't mind you giving me a beating. <laughs> Yeah, all these guys are really cool until they get strapped up. Ow! Hey! Hey, hey, hey it's, it's not funny. Come on, you macho asshole. Come on. Ah. I'm trying to think, how the hell did this sex and painting ever come about? I mean, my guess is it was probably in the 1600s when they came up with everything. <laughs> They're so socially deviant, those people. But. It was probably some guy in bed with a woman and the chandelier fell on his ass just as he about to have an orgasm. <laughs> hey. Hmm. Then, you know, then it got to a point he had his servants. Okay, drop the chandelier now. Uh, uh. <laughs> Shall I hoist up the chandelier for you, my lord? Wait for the signal. Sixteen <laughs> hundreds. It's amazing how they're still trying to blame music on stuff. They, this just kills me. You know, Ozzy Osbourne just beat a rap a little while ago. Some parents thought that their child committed suicide due to one of his songs. Now, the idea that any form of music can make you want to kill yourself? What a crock of shit. I mean, well, well, polka. Yeah, all right, polka. <laughs> You put me in an elevator with a guy with a go da 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 All right, polka, all right. But, you know, really. But seriously. But, you know, I mean, come on, give me a break. When I was growing up, I thought the Beatles were gods. I worshipped the Beatles. But if they would have came up to me personally and said, you know, Paulie, Jones and Ringo and I were thinking you should kill yourself. Well, there's new stones on my right now. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Plenty of choices on the rack there. Back to Liverpool. Please. Of course, you know, the, you know the, the heavy metal bands can't win. I mean, if Ozzy came out with a song that went, Don't kill your parents. Brush your teeth after every meal. Go to school. There'd still be kids getting in trouble sitting in court going, Oh, I thought he was being sarcastic. That's a no-win situation. It's not far back. I have a problem with people who even flirt with death. You know what I mean? How many people have done this bungee cord jumping thing? Anyone? Few of you? See, to me, I can't imagine my life being that boring that I need to be thrown over a bridge. <laughs> Tied to this elastic band on my ankle, you know, like, oh my god, I just can't take it. Uh. <laughs> All right, I can take the office for another week. <laughs> Damn office politics. Another memo, throw me over. I never thought there'd be a sport that would make skydivers go, what are you guys, nuts? <laughs> At least we have parachutes. <laughs> yeah, skydiving, so much safer. <laughs> a little while ago, my friends tried to make me go skydiving. <laughs> There's no way I'm going. And they try to convince me every possible way, you know? Hey, you pack your own chute, man. You're, you're the master of your own destiny. Nobody touches your chute, man. You pack your own chute. I can't pack my own lunch, man. I can't make a good bed. I'm not packing it's something my life could depend on. You could have 15 chutes. They could all screw up. You don't know. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. Ah! Then what? You got about two and a half minutes before you hit the ground? Please. If I have to go, I mean, if I have to die, I want it to be quick and painless. <laughs> Accent on the quick, little pain, <gasps> okay, but quick. <laughs> quick is the main thing, quick. <laughs> Two and a half minutes of floating in the air, I mean, my God, a after a minute you get tired of screaming. <laughs> You got about a minute and a half before you hit the ground, time enough for you to think about it. You're like, oh, God, this is gonna hurt. I can't believe I let those jerks talk me into it. <laughs> Quick, 
fucking painless. That's what I want. See, I'm always afraid of dying in the middle of doing something really unnecessary. Like, I think it'd be very embarrassing to face God on Judgment Day after dying in a stupid accident. You know, like, oh, how you doing there? Yeah. <laughs> I was jogging and uh, had my headphones on. <laughs> Didn't hear the train. <laughs> That doesn't sound good. <laughs> Can you imagine Cloud 13 for eternity with all the other losers? <laughs> Be the goof cloud. <laughs> oh, I see we have a new person on the cloud. Would you care to stand up, tell us your name and how you died? <laughs> My name's Mike McDonald. Hi, Mike. <laughs> I was uh, jogging, had my headphones on, didn't hear the train. Can I sit down now? Hi, Mike, my name's Bob. Had some toast, caught in a toaster, took a knife. <laughs> How you doing? I'll introduce you all the other guys in the cloud. <laughs> I was looking up a number on my car phone, went up the road. <laughs> it's the president of the cloud, yes, thank you. A lot of guys on cloud 13. So, now. If cloud 13 is the loser cloud, then conversely, of course, cloud 9 would be the cool cloud. Think about it, cloud 9, you could do anything you want. All the fantasies could come true, you know, like slam dunking that basketball, hitting the grand slam in the World Series, all the fantasies, that'd be great. Now, obviously, we know all the guy fantasies. We know what guys would want on cloud 9. Let's talk about the women here for a couple of minutes. What, what would cloud 9 be for the women? Anything you women wanted, it would be there. What would it be? Cloud nine for the women. Now, you're a woman. <laughs> well, that's a very good disguise. <laughs> I know all there is to know. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Look, if you haven't seen the movie by now. All right. Anyways, what would you want? Anything you want, it would be there. What would it be? Robert Redford. Robert Redford. Enjoy your ride home. All right. <laughs> This always kills me when I do this bit that, you know, there's always women that they're sitting there with their boyfriend or their husband and they always say like, you know, Robert Redford or something like that. And they go, what the, you, the husband is right there. Can you imagine how he feels? Oh, Robert fucking Redford. Eh? <laughs> the last time we rent the natural, you. Uh, no, I know why you want to watch that fucking movie so much. What would you like? You don't know? A woman who doesn't know what she wants. Hello, Ripley. <laughs> You would think by now they would have it down. <laughs> After years of oppression, they would know what they want, but no. All right. Anything you want. You name it, it would be there. Anything you want. You only have a 90-minute tape. Please come up with something. <laughs> the whole show just stops here. Well, she couldn't think of it, you know. Hold the... the, the. So it was a good special until that girl did. She didn't know what... She... <laughs> then it was like, a, you know, 50 minutes of just a camera on her. What would you like? A month in the South Pacific. A month in the South Pacific. You know, it's weird. Every time I do this bit, I expect Andrew's like, you know, equality. He's like, a month in the South Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And what would you do there? <laughs> he said knowingly. <laughs> Oh, the Robert Redford's already been taken? Oh, let me think, all right. <laughs> I should ask for Robert Redford in the South Pacific. Oh. <laughs> I had to go first. <laughs> what would you do in the South Pacific? Just relax. Just relax. How? <laughs> A couple of nights ago, I had this woman in the audience, she... Uh, very smart woman. She was sitting there with her husband. I asked her what you want on cloud nine. She goes, I have everything I want right here. <laughs> smart woman. <laughs> Couldn't get that guy's head out of the theater. <laughs> Bet you she got anything she wanted. <laughs> she knew I'm just a stupid comedian with a little comedy bit. I, I, I don't have the power to go, and yes, you'll have Robert Redford. <laughs> and there he is. What the hell? I 
was in uh, Sundance and I was doing a script there. Look, now I'm in this fucking auditorium. What happened here? You know, she's a smart woman. She knows it's a stupid little comedy bit. Of course, a couple of nights though, we, we had a woman that was obvious. Boy, somebody done her wrong. Because when I asked her what she wanted on cloud nine, she goes, meant to be pregnant. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Every day. Ouch. In the kitchen with no remotes. Well, oh, easy lady. <laughs> yes? Men that aren't afraid to be called what they eat. I'll be right back with my improv. something on eating. <laughs> Did I hear bus stop? Bus stop. We'll be right back. <laughs> and and bus stop. We'll be right back. I'm curious, what, what did that mean, though? <laughs> Men that are not afraid to be called what they eat. So let's say, let's say you eat a hamburger. So what, you're a hamburger? <laughs> I don't get it. Don't ever be afraid of being called a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Ten foot pole, please, thank you. <laughs> I'm not touching that line. Thank you for sharing with us. <laughs> the hell does that mean? Hold on. Let's find out what our other ones were. <laughs> okay. Interesting. <laughs> Cloud nine. <laughs> Mike McDonald's last foray into the crowd. <laughs> From now on, we'll just do the prepared material. <laughs> Thank you. Keep your suggestions to yourself. Write them on a card. I'll read them diligently later. <laughs> okay. Well, the Cloud nine bitch out of here. Wait, Every time I do it, it gets weirder and weirder. I can't believe the fucking answers. Like, no, okay. I'm afraid to be called a pussy. I'm, I'm gonna be, I have nightmares about that today. Like, pussy! <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, I dreamt I was back in Vancouver and that woman said pussy. What, what does she mean? What does it mean? <laughs> Anyways. So lately I've been uh, trying to take a little care, a little more care of myself because uh, my wife and I are trying to start a family and uh, yeah, thanks for laughing at that. <laughs> the fact that I may reproduce. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm actually glad that we waited so long because I think now I'm mentally prepared to have a family. I actually want to have a child, you know, and uh, I, I sort of want to have a, a child soon because, you know, I'm not getting any younger and I, I want to be able to play with my kid, you know. <laughs> I want to enjoy some of his life, I mean, you know. Like, Come on, Dad, throw me the football! I'm a bitch. <laughs> the bills, the bills. Yeah. Right now, my wife's trying to get pregnant. Well, I mean, no, not right. A 
I'll tell you something, uh, you know, my wife is one of the only people I trust on this planet. I love my wife so much, if I ever caught her fooling around, that would be it for me. That would be, life is over as I know it, because everything would mean nothing. I would be totally caught, I, I trust my wife so much that if I ever caught her fooling around, that would be my last surprise in life. Well, that and if they found Mother Teresa drinking vodka in a Corvette during spring break. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't believe in anybody anymore. <laughs> the hell was that? Mother Teresa, I'm Mother Teresa, get away from me. Get away from me. <laughs> and I myself, I would never fool around my wife. I would never jeopardize my marriage. For, uh, first of all, the first reason is uh, I love her. Second reason, she's my best friend. And three, it took me five years to figure out what this face meant. All right. <laughs> Not gonna start that again with someone else. <laughs> the real reason I wouldn't fool around her though is because I wouldn't want to hurt her. And I think uh, my definition of maturity is when you realize that your pleasures are not worth someone else's pain. Dear Reader's Digest, quotable quotes. <laughs> Maturity. I can just see people all sitting on the can. Very profound. Flush. <laughs> he is so profound. Yeah, I think that guys that lack imagination fool around, you see. I have, I have a very vivid imagination. I can look at a woman and in 30 seconds picture the whole life with her. The whole thing, sex, getting married, having kids, they grow up, the terrible dudes, blah, 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 video, they go to high school, blah, they get their own life, they grow old, we're growing old in a rocking chair, in an old folks home, we die. That's all in 30 seconds. I can do it all. So there's no point in me trying to pick her up. <laughs> I did it all in my head. See, guys that have no imagination, well, I wonder what it'll be like to be in bed with her. <laughs> that, that's as far as they think. Then they actually get in bed, they go, oh, wait a minute, oh, geez, you want to see me again? Oh, what's my wife going to think? I should have thought this out at all. <laughs> Joey bought a few, go, no imagination. <laughs> nah. I think the best thing about my wife trying to get pregnant right now is that she's off the pill. I sincerely wish that every woman could get off the pill. The pill, obviously, a man-made thing. Wasn't a bunch of women sitting in a laboratory going, okay, we need to make something that men can have sex with us with no responsibility, <laughs> and it has serious side effects detrimental to our health. Let's get on it, girls, come on. <laughs> Susan, you were good in chemistry, here you go. <laughs> Obviously a mad main thing. The strangest way I've, I've heard it put is one of my friends actually said this to me. So I hear your wife uh, and you are working on uh, having a kid. What a stupid way to put it. Working on having a kid? Yeah, work, 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 work. <laughs> There's a lot of unemployed out there, but I have a job, damn it. <laughs> work, 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 work. <laughs> I'll work right through the weekend, boss. That's all right. <laughs> work, work, work. No sick leave for me, damn it. Work, work. Oh, McDonald, very hard worker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a company man. Oh, work, work, work. Right to the holidays, Thanksgiving. Hey, work, work, work. Merry Christmas. Work, work, work. Nice job if you can get it. Work, 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 yep. A lot of work involved there. <laughs> Best job I've ever had. <laughs> of course, much to my chagrin, it has turned out to be quite the work. Because my wife has gone overboard with this fertility stuff. Because the pill, I mean, God, it's, you know, we've been trying for two years now. And because of the pill, it takes about two years for your body to get back to normal. So she's got into this fertility stuff. And she's got charts above the bed, like the moon and the tides and the tarot cards and the calculators. Like, okay, according to my calculations, we have to do it 5.30 Thursday. 5.30 Thursday. What is this, a mission now? I mean, I'll be wearing a red carnation. Ask for Colonel Troutman. What? What the hell is this? 5.30. Now, is it just my wife or all women have to pee before they make love? Is that just my wife? 
I don't know what it is, boy. Just put my arm. I gotta pee. So much for the spontaneity of the whole thing. You have to pee, do you? Every time I just touch her, pee, pee. Oh, all right. <laughs> she can be sleeping. I wake her up, you know. Must pee. What <laughs> the hell is your problem? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you know, you knew I was coming home at 5.30. 5.25, go to the bathroom. <laughs> Am I out of line here? You're the one that made up the schedule. <laughs> 5.30 Thursday. I tell you, you know, it, it really does take out the romance when you plan it. You know, 5.30 Thursday, it's like, you know, I mean, it's one thing for your wife to go, I want you. It's another thing for her to go, I'm ovulating. <laughs> well, where's the romance? Because contrary to popular belief, I really do think that real men want to have romance in the bedroom. Real men want to satisfy their partners. Part of my sexual satisfaction comes from the happiness that I give my wife. Every real man's fantasy in bed is to have the paramedics come after sex. <laughs> Clear! <laughs> what you do to her, buddy? Clear! <laughs> the third time this week, we're not coming back. Clear! <laughs> Put it away, it's a lethal weapon. Clear! <laughs> Sorry, I had to come all the way up there again, guys. There, sign here. All right. <laughs> See you next Thursday by 30. You know, it kills me the guys that complain about not getting enough sex after, after marriage. A, they're doing something wrong, or B, I think guys remember single life a lot better than it was. You know? I mean, I remember being single, you know, hanging out with these jerks every weekend, no chance of sex whatsoever, getting drunk out of our minds, and just before we passed out, we go, lesbians. <laughs> I don't remember it as being good at all, you know? It was pretty, uh, pretty lame, you know? Back in those compassionate days of our youth, you know, when we, when we thought, you know, a gay guy was just a guy who wanted to fuck us, and uh, a lesbian was a woman who wouldn't. <laughs> The compassion of youth. <laughs> it kills me now, you know, that this gay thing is still an issue. Oh man, what a non-issue this is. Who gives a shit about this? Who cares? This whole gays in the military thing, I'll tell you the real problem. The real problem is straight men are worried that gay men are going to start treating them like they treat women. <laughs> That's the problem. You know, they think they're going to be coming out of the shower like, you know, hey, 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 hey! <laughs> No means no, man. <laughs> my mouth and my eyes say no, man. <laughs> this homophobia just kills me. You know, I mean, these guys, as soon as they see us nude, they'll attack us. <laughs> you hear the whole gay community going, please. <laughs> Don't flatter yourself. <laughs> These guys are really afraid of being rejected by both sexes. <laughs> the hell? Women don't want me, men don't want me, and animals are afraid of me. <laughs> that means bad. <laughs> oh, I made myself laugh. All right. It puzzles me though, why are gay men, especially in movies and television, they're always portrayed as the effeminate stereotype. Why? Why is it always the effeminate stereotype? Why isn't it just two guys? Just two guys that happen to be gay. We'll watch the hockey game, have a couple of beers, we'll have sex later. Beautiful. <laughs> hey, it's a commercial, we got a minute. <laughs> you want to talk? No, to you. The game's back on. Beautiful. I forgot your birthday, that's okay, I forgot yours. Beautiful. <laughs> the house is a mess. Who gives a shit? 
<laughs> think about it, two guys would be great, you know? Let's go to a movie, what time does it start? Five minutes, here's your baseball cap, let's go! <laughs> Beautiful. All your priorities in the right thing, you know, get that 60 inch color TV before you get the new dining room set. <laughs> What's the card table broken? Let's get the TV! Beautiful. <laughs> right now there's some guys going, well, you know, he has a point there. <laughs> No, I've never thought of it that way. <laughs> now, the point I'm trying to make, obviously, is that it's all the same. Love is love. It's all the same. Two men, two women, a man and a woman. You hear the same things. Why didn't you phone if you're going to be late? Pick up the garbage. It's all the same. <laughs> love is love, you know. Gay and lesbians aren't any more promiscuous or deviant than straight people, believe me. Oh, God. The Catholic Church, you know, it's a sin against God. You know, it'd be a lot easier to listen to the Catholic Church once they excommunicate their pedophiles. <laughs> I mean, and, and what do these people think? If they, believe in, if they believe in God, how can they believe that they're not going to be judged? That when they get up there, what, God's going to forget? God, you know, God's going to go, no, you pull down the videotape. Is that not you? <laughs> get in the elevator. <laughs> elevator to hell! The same thing with these, you know, racist people. I mean, racist people must have no fear in God. Because if they did, they would know that racism, which is such a bullshit issue to begin with. I mean, you know, the color of somebody's skin. Who gives a shit? We keep on ignoring the ozone, we'll all be one color. Charcoal ash gray. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> in this next talk, I'm not trying to imply that all racists come from the South. Just the funny ones. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> You know, a little while ago I was doing a show in Forsyth County, Georgia. Remember that place? This is the place that was made famous about, I don't know, God, I've been at least eight years ago. They, uh, they got on TV, these idiots, and they went, we don't want no black people living here. So what happened? They organized up and went right down to Forsyth County. There's a million of them here now. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> the hell you talking to the TV people? Shut up! See, if I was gone, I would, I would be everybody's worst nightmare on their judgment day. Like, these guys in Forsyth County, they go up for judgment when they die. I would reveal myself as a black man to them. Think about that. That'd be so funny. I mean, I would die just to get a good ringside seat for that one. You know what I'm saying? I don't line up for a lot of shit, but you know that. <laughs> to see the look on their face when they see God's black. Oh, man, I want to be right there, you know? You know? Oh, here comes some people in Forsyth County. Turn up the lights. Turn up the lights. Shh. Get me on the couch, get me on the couch. Can they come? Tell the band to play Soul Man. Okay. <laughs> they come through the pearly gates, the band starts. Ba -da 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 -da. I'm a soul man. <laughs> I'm a soul man. And now here's God. Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up? <laughs> Jeez, you're not gonna believe this one, Roy. <laughs> I don't suppose Sardi do any good right now. <laughs> I didn't think so. Uh, we'll just be getting on this elevator to hell. <laughs> they go all the way down the hell and the devil comes up. Yo, 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 what's up, what's up? <laughs> like the devil's gonna cut them some slack. Life is hard enough just keeping food on the table, keeping a family and some close friends, you know, but man. I can't take more than two seconds of that old broken record from old people that when I was a kid, we never had we hey, 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 man. I cannot listen to two seconds of that anymore. Last Thanksgiving, I lost it on my grandfather. <laughs> he just went into that broken record. You know, when I was a kid, you, hey, hey, I'll tell you what you never had. <laughs> Every year, I gotta listen to this. I'll tell you what you never had, Grandpa. You never had to worry about everything in this life killing you. <laughs> you went shopping, took five minutes. Bread, eggs, milk, sugar, salt, booze, cigarettes, done. <laughs> I gotta sit there for an hour. How much cholesterol in this one? Is there radon in this side? That's what you never had. You never had to worry about drive-by shootings or like a crack babies. Huh? You never had to worry about that. You never had to worry about your future being mortgaged to your eyeballs and living better than your parents. 
So shut the hell up! <laughs> Pass the gravy. <laughs> Just lost it. Oh, sorry, Grandpa. <laughs> well, he's right there. He's got a point. Looking forward to death now. <laughs> I'm glad to take all the fear away, but... <laughs> I mean, I, I actually used to feel sorry for old people. I walked by an old folks home, you'd see them out there in the rocking chair. Oh, gee, you feel sorry for them. Now I envy them. They're leaving while half the shit's still here. <laughs> They're leaving while the planet's the same way they came in, you know. What the hell do we have to look forward to? You know, grand, you know grandchildren going off in spaceships. Hey, uh, hope you find a class M planet. <laughs> Drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you take a look at the problem, I mean, you take a look at crack, boy, that makes my generation almost seem romantic. I mean, how much, uh, how much crime was there involved with pot, you know? Hey, let's go rob a bank. <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> Hey, let's get a cheeseburger. Beautiful. Let's go. We leave now, we'll be back in time for cartoons. I think we're going about it all the wrong ways on this anti-drug campaign, though, for our kids. If we want to save our kids, we better come up with some better ads than what we've been coming up with. How about this one? Next time you give your dog a biscuit, watch your dog after he finishes eating the biscuit. Watch him go through the carpet going, is this more biscuit? No, it's lint. Is this more biscuit? No, it's lint. Is, this more is there any more biscuit? Do you want to be like that? I mean, if we really want to have a drug war, we could have one and we could win. But there are some problems, unfortunately, I think we're never going to agree upon. Like this abortion thing. Right to life, pro-choice. Convenient titles for both sides, by the way. You know, well, I like choice, but yes, right to life. <laughs> I'm on the fence here. <laughs> you know, I mean, I agree with both groups, but I don't want to be a member of either group. Because these are two groups that will walk over a homeless person to go have their little confrontation. What happened to the homeless person's choices? What, he just falls through the cracks and that's it? And, and what about the homeless person's right to life? Or is it just a right to life till you're born? Here's a piece of cardboard. Good luck. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> you know? I think everybody has a desire to be good inside. And I think, you know, for those of us who are wanting to start a family or those of us who have a young family, it's scary out there. I mean, I fluctuate back and forth every day going, do I want to bring a kid into this mess? And sometimes, you know, it's like certain problems I think, you know, we're never going to agree upon. But what about these problems that I, I'm tired of hearing about them because I think they should have been solved a million years ago. Women's rights. Who's arguing about this? I mean, who's, who's holding this up? Who doesn't realize that this is going to be better for all of us? I and mean, it's not like the women are asking for weird stuff, too. Equal pay, equal job, you know, no sexual harassment. Poke men in the eyes. Hey, wait a minute. Hey. <laughs> Ow, hey, I haven't even signed it. Hey, hey, what's this number three thing? Hey, hey. Uh. Come on, let's get that over with. You know, uh, clean air coming. Who's, who's arguing about this? Just once I wish there was a day that we could just vote on everything. Just vote on everything. Take about a year and think about everything and go and vote. Everybody has to vote. We go in there and vote. All right, save the children, save the animals, save the planet. Yes. <laughs> uh, don't abuse anybody. Just try to get along. All right, fine. And uh, no more trying to take over the world for power, greed, or religion. Yes. Okay, let's try to make this world into the paradise that it should be. Yes. <laughs> now I'd like to go start my family. Thank you very much. God bless. Good night. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mike McDonald.